so we've got that going there now the next thing we need to do is basically create our product.js and add content into it first thing we're going to import is the layout because we've already created the layout which can contains the the header and it's available in components and then layout okay let me zoom it in let me close this one next thing is import with router so we need with router so that we can handle our routes and we're going to pull it from the next router okay and then we also need our client because we need to write the GraphQL query so we already have a client from Apollo client we already created that I've explained that to you in previous videos we also need the GQL to write our GraphQL query and we need to pull that off from GraphQL tag and then let's just create a component called product is equal to with router we just need to wrap our component inside of the with router okay so I can go ahead and do it this way or I can do it in another way also so I'll just show that to you how so like do props and then your component and return something from the component like this and then you just need to wrap your product like export default with router and then just wrap your component like this so you can do it like this to handle your routes or you can directly wrap it here so you don't have to do an extra step right here okay awesome so you have this going on right here and uh, we just need to write our query so remember that we have this function available called get initial props that gets executed both on the client as well as server side so first on the server side and then on the client side so just go ahead and do product dot get initial props and do an async function okay and then this function has the context available inside of it and I've already explained what this is earlier it contains all the data that comes from the server side and you can pass that to the client side so the context has has the property called query and it will contain the slug that we are actually getting on top so this slug will be available inside of the context query okay so we'll just say slug we'll pull out this using object destructuring and then we'll just say context and then we're going to get the id out of this because id is available right here 296 right from the slug so we're just going to say id is equal to slug so if the slug is present of course if this slug is present only then we can get the id so we'll check the condition and because this is a string we'll pass it into an integer so we'll say pass int it's a javascript function that we're using to pass it and then we'll use the javascript function to split the string so in the slug we'll get this entire string but we need only the id so we have a javascript function available called split so we're just going to use the split method split of course we need to use slug first so slug dot split and then it takes where you want to split it from so I want to split it from this basically okay so I want to split it from this now what this is going to do is going to split this entire string but we have two dash over here so I only want the last one so I can say so once this splits it in form of an array so I want to show it to you here let's say you have const um, and you have slug like this so if you use slug dot split and then you say that I want to split it from dash so you can see that it's split into three uh, different elements from this point so I want the last one so last one will be 
dot pop. So if I use the pop function, it's going to give me the last element. Exactly, that's what we need, right? So we'll say dot pop. Okay. So we've got our slug right there. If we don't have the slug, then we'll just say else context dot query dot id. So whatever the id is available in the query, just take that. Okay. Awesome. Now we're going to write a query using GraphQL. So we'll just say const like we wrote a query earlier in the index.js, which I explained to you earlier this way. Similarly, we'll write a query here as well. So we'll say product underscore query is equal to GQL and the back text sign. And we'll just say query product. Of course, we need to pass the ID over here. So we'll just say ID and we'll say integer not and then inside of this we will write product by product ID and then we'll pass the ID that we get on top So what all do we need? We need the name. So I think we all have got all of that information here. Why don't we take it from here? Great. Got all of that, right? Awesome. Now we just need to let this get resolved and store it into result. So we can just do res or we can say result is equal to await client dot query and then just pass this query object that you've got on top so query product query and second will be variables and then we'll say id okay let's just name this res for now awesome and then we just need to return it so whatever we return from here, like we discussed earlier from this function, whatever you return from get initial prop, that will be available to your component right here in, in form of props. So what do we want to return? We want the product. So let's do that. So product res dot data dot product by in this console log. Props and see what we get there. So let's go back to the home page. We are on the home page now. And it's coming from index.js. Let me get rid of this console that we had done earlier. Have we got any console? Yep, product. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. So we've written a query and we have gone ahead and console log the props and let's see what we get inside of the props because we are passing product inside of the props. So this is our home page. Let's click on it. It takes me to the product page. You can see you've got the clean URL. Why? Because inside of the product.js, which was a component handling the uh, product to be displayed on the home page, you had said that send the user to the product page, but show on the URL as product name, uh, product, and then slash the slug. But the actual URL behind the scene is this. That's why we pulled out the slug out of that with the ID. Okay coming back to the product.js because we have gone ahead and uh, written a query and then when this when we get the response after the GraphQL fetches the data this response is sent in form of product object to props so if we click on this you can see inside of the props we get product and sure enough we have this product ID we have the name WordPress pendant pennant you can see the same slug you can see the product ID is the same and you've got all of the data that we have asked for in specific. So if we were using the REST API, WordPress REST API, then we would, we would get all the data unnecessarily. But we only need these information. So if you've got our specifics based, based on our needs, that's the beauty of GraphQL. And I also want to show you uh, what you get in context. So if you console context, 
because it gets run on server side as well as client side you can see on server side we have inside of the context we have query that's what we have pulled out and inside of query we have slug and we have the wordpress dash pennant dash 296 so that's what we pulled out we pulled out this query slug using object destructuring and we are passing that as an id and once we get the id we are just going ahead and writing a query to go ahead and get all of the information i'm not going to go ahead in detail of you know how to write a query i'm assuming if you are watching this you already have basic knowledge about graphql if you don't, there are several other tutorials available to learn GraphQL. Maybe I will make one in future as well. But this is how you write your query for a single product. Okay. And you just pull out all of the data that you need. So all we have to do is just display the product, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use layout because we already have pulled layout, which contains my header. And just wrap it. Okay, and since we have product inside of this prop, so let's pull it out using object destructuring. So we can say const product is equal to product, sorry, props. So it will pull out the product out of it. And that's what we need. Okay, awesome. Now we're just going to go ahead and uh, write all of the information about the product so if product so if we have product question mark then we will go ahead and display the information of the product otherwise it will be an empty string so let's do a div and I'm going to use class name let's use card for now we will design it later the idea is just to show you you know how you know to display the single product and I'll design it later after finishing this tutorial maybe and I'll add that to the git repo so you can take it from there okay so background light margin bottom 3 padding let's give it a padding of 5 okay and again we can have a div with the card header so we're just using bootstrap guys okay and let's have product name inside of this so product dot name so remember inside of product we have the name available so I'm just using that and then we can have another div with card body so we are just using bootstrap card we can have an h4 tag we can have a title so h4 card title and we can just put product name over here again and then we can have the image, the product image. We can just okay. This will be product dot image dot source URL image dot source URL. Got that alt product. This is for accessibility image, and uh, we can also add a source set. Attribute product dot image dot source set. This one right here okay and then we can have the price also being displayed so what do we have so far awesome guys you can see our products already being displayed this is what you've been waiting for for a long time right so you have it there it wasn't too difficult was it card text so let's get the product description product description you can see now we have the description awesome great works wonders so you can now see that we've got a product being displayed of course it doesn't look that good so let's just add some width to the product so let's say width is just uh, 200 pixels okay it's small now 
awesome and let's just add some padding around this or maybe give it a width okay so I'll add this style later on I'm not so you can see now you've got the product being displayed if I want to go back to the home page I can I uh, can just click on the home button and go back to the home page I click back on the product page go back to the home page awesome go on to this one yes of course working go on to this one works great awesome so now you can see guys that you have successfully created your uh, site WooCommerce site where you have displayed the list of the products and you can also go to the single product and the best part is that why to wait you can just deploy it whenever you want so all you have to do is just stop the server hit now and it's deployed so you can show it to your friends, colleagues, flash it on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you want. Okay, awesome. So guys, if you did like the video, please give a thumbs up. Uh, do share your comments if you have any questions, any doubts. And uh, do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Imran H. Sayyad. And on GitHub as well. Uh, as well as do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In the next video onwards, we're going to learn about how to go ahead and uh, create a cart page okay so so far we've got the single product we'll have a cart button over here and then when user clicks on this it'll be added to the cart so we'll show the cart over here okay so all coming soon stay tuned and uh, to share uh, to go ahead and support show your support just give it a nice star over here just add a star just click on this okay all right guys then take care bye bye see you next